Matthew 12. Um, we're studying devils, who they are, what they are, where they came from. Um, how do people, is it possible for people to be possessed with a devil? You may work for such a person. I hope it's not me. Amen. Um, but there are truly people who, let's, let's put it like this. There are people who are possessed of devils. And that means that a devil has found a dwelling place in their house. Um, every creature has a place that they like to live. We have a place, we build houses, we like to live there. Foxes have holes, birds have nests, okay? And so, just as in the animal kingdom, in the spiritual realm, there are places where devils or spirits in general just like they like to habitate or inhabit certain areas. Um, it is generally where they feel comfortable. Foxes do not build nests in trees. Birds, most birds, do not dig holes in the ground. They build nests. And so it is particularly a place that they built themselves or they are comfortable with living there. Um, and it depends on their nature. When it comes to devils, I asked the question this morning, is it possible for a born-again, Bible-believing Christian to be possessed by a devil and I think the Bible is very clear that the answer is no those people are sealed they are born again the Bible says we are not our own and God has control over our house and he would not allow a devil to come in I mean if God is our authority then God is our protector and so he would not allow the enemy to come and take over or steal away his very own habitation. So, but then there is devil possession, there is devil oppression. Is it possible for born again, Bible believing Christians to be oppressed by devils? And of course the answer is yes, because that's what they do. They work against you in the morning, in the middle of the day, in the night. They will wake you up sometimes in the middle of the night. Um, I'm not real sure how much, I'm not real sure how much control the devil has or devils have over the mind of, of a believer who is asleep. I'm not sure how much control they have over our dreams. So I don't necessarily think that devils give us bad dreams. But I think that they must sense what's going on when we wake up. And dogs can smell fear, I'm told. So if they get around me, they must smell a lot. Especially if they're strange dogs and I don't know them. Uh, so I think devils can sense um, certain emotions in people and then use that against them some way uh, then we know according to Ephesians chapter 2 that Satan is the God of this world he's the prince of the power of the air and he is the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience so let's say um, your next door neighbor who is not saved that person is going to be influenced in every way by the de by the world of devils, by Satan, by all of his evil angels, as it were, they are going to be influenced. Their decisions that they make on a daily basis, on a routine basis, I think are led and guided by these evil spirits. When they say that they don't want to participate in anybody's religion because they want to be free, the truth of it is they're not free. They're being told what to do. They just think that, that it's their own idea. So... Matthew chapter, let's see here. 
Matthew chapter 12. Is that where I told you to go? That's where we want to start. In verse 22, uh, we sort of ended, uh, the last Sunday night we were here, we sort of ended with this particular passage. And um, I remember there was just something that stood out to me. I'd never really considered it before until I was teaching it. But in Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, the Bible says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed them insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts. And said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? If I by Beelzebub. And who is Beelzebub? He's Satan, the devil. Um, if, you, if you make a little note in your Bible... The name Beelzebub has the word Baal in it. B-A-A-L or B-E-E-L. To me, it's the same etymology, the same origin. Baal, does anybody know what the word Baal means? Lord. Okay. So, and in this case, think about it. We have the Old Testament uh, yod heh vah which is Jehovah, but it's uh, mostly translated or written out as Lord. That is God's title and his name. He is Lord of lords and King of kings. Satan then is a lesser Lord. A, I guess you could say like a replacement Lord. So if you don't want to follow God, then you follow a different Lord, Beelzebub. So Jesus said, If I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. Verse 28, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Jesus being the kingdom of God. He is the king of and anywhere that he is, is his kingdom. Remember what he was called at his birth by Herod. What did Herod call him? Where is he that is to be born king of the Jews? What did Pontius Pilate call him at his death? King of the Jews. So for 33 and a half years... He is king of the Jews. Um, let's see here. But if, I ca uh, but if I cast out devils, where were we? If I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. So Christ is the king. And anywhere the king is, that's where his kingdom is. Or else, how can one enter... And verse 29... Last, not last Sunday night, Sunday night before last, stood out to me like it never has before. Because I had the question, how does someone become possessed? How does someone become possessed of devils? I would never want that. Okay, but I know what devils do to people. I know, I know the end of it, and I would never want that, but... There are people who become possessed of devils. Is this something that they wanted? Is this something that, uh, or they were just walking down the street and boom, a devil entered into them and took them over for no reason whatsoever. I think the key to this is verse 29. And Sister Laura came to me afterward and she was dancing and shouting for joy and giving me high fives and everything like that. And she said, man, that is so awesome. I never heard that before. And I said, I didn't hear it either until tonight. Um, be, let me read the verse and I'll, I'll explain to you what she said. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods 
except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So Laura and I had heard the same teaching for years that the strong man is the devil that is in a person's body. And that strong man must be bound before he can be cast out. Okay? She had heard that. I have heard that. There is an author by the name of Frank Peretti. He wrote a series of novels. The first one was called, um, well, now I just drew a blank. This Present Darkness was the first one. Piercing the Darkness was the second. And I have to say, it was pretty good at, he, he wrote this fictitious novel and he was dealing with this small town and a pastor and there was some spiritual warfare going on, but he actually wrote in these characters of these devils and these angels and how they're, they were interacting with one another and what they were saying and how they were doing this. And one of the devils, one of the head devils of this area was called the strong man. So, and she had heard this, I've heard this. I don't know if anybody else has ever heard this, that the strong man is the devil that is in a person. He must be bound before he can be cast out. Has anybody besides me ever heard that before? Okay, good. Well, you, you have clean minds then. Because when I read this two weeks ago, I immediately saw it for what I believe it really is. The strong man is not the devil. It says a strong man. The strong man is the individual and his will. Everybody listening to me has a free will. By that I mean you have the right and the ability to make your own choices. And I believe strongly in that. John Calvin didn't. He did not believe. He did not believe men had a free will. He believed that Jesus rubber stamped everybody that was going to be saved and everybody that was going to be lost from the beginning. That was it. And I think there was just parts of the Bible he left out. But anyway, let's pray and then we'll get into this. Heavenly Father, we ask God your blessing on your word. We thank you, Lord, for it. We ask, Father, that you guide us and lead us into all truth. Lord, I don't want to say anything that's wrong. I don't want to teach anything that's wrong. I want, to, I want to understand it, and I want your people to understand it, especially today. The days we're living in, Father, we have heard three children taking their own life in the past two weeks. And Lord, there's absolutely no doubt that devils were everywhere present. Maybe even inside of the three teenagers that killed themselves. And Father, our young people in our communities are being fed a non-stop dose of violence, occult-based TV shows, occult-based books, uh, movies, very evil, wicked, occult, adulterous music. And Father, there's just no filter in their lives whatsoever. And the generation that is growing up, Lord, will be prime targets for whatever the devil wants to do to them. And Father, I pray, God, that we could reach one and then maybe another and then maybe another for your kingdom and your glory's sake for their sake to save them from the torture of these devils both in their life and the torture of the lake of fire in eternity so father open up our eyes teach us great and mighty things help us father to pass that knowledge along to others lord who need to hear it Bless your word, use us for your 
namesake, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said. Now, let's look at this issue of the house. The house, of course, to me, is the body. The Bible's very clear on that. The house, we, we dwell in this house right now. Our earthly tabernacle, Paul said. One of these days, this house, I like George Yunt's, the cathedral singing, this old house once knew my children, this old house once knew my wife. I like that song because this house is breaking down and I'm going to get a new one one of these days. So to me, the house is the body and the strong man is my will. I have strength of will in that I can say yes to things or no to things um, versus the animal kingdom where they do not have that will. Animals cannot turn down, they cannot turn down food, they cannot turn down mating season, they cannot turn down water, they cannot make these simple choices, but humans can. We can fast and pray, we can say to ourselves, I'm not going to eat for the space of a day or two days or three days. Animals cannot do that. We can. So we have the ability to make free choices in life. When a devil inhabits somebody, that will is gone. They no longer, and we saw that in the man of Gadarenes and the two men from the uh, Gergesenes, was that they lost their freedom of choice the strong man was bound and they had, they had no uh, strength of will anymore to make those devils leave. This was why Jesus was required. He, he had to come in and cast those devils out. So if you look at the verse again, or else how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods? Spoilage has to do with taking what this man has or what this person has. Except he first bind the strong man. Then he will spoil the house. If we look in Mark and Luke, uh, this same passage, we get, we get close to the same, but it gives us a little bit more light shed on it. Mark chapter 3, turn there. And then Luke 11, turn to both of those places. And I'll give you just a moment, an opportunity to do that. Mark chapter 3, verse 27, Luke chapter 11, verse 21. Those of you watching online, those of you watching the recording, uh, I strongly encourage you get your Bible out, or if you use the Pure Bible Search software at purebiblesearch.com, you have the ability to highlight and make notes. So if that's the way you do it, or if you use a note-keeping app like Evernote, which is what I use, um, then I strongly encourage you to keep these notes. And reference them and do your own study. Mark chapter 3 verse 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man. The strong man, I believe, is your freedom of will, your freedom of choice. That must be bound so that you can no longer choose. And then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies whithsoever, wherewithsoever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Then in Luke 11, verse 21, When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, to me this is very telling. Luke 11, When a strong man armed Keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Have you ever had a devil try to get in your mind to cause you to do certain things? Absolutely. And it's a fight. The fight is on right then and there. They want you to make bad decisions. They want you to sin. They want you to leave the mission field. <laughs> they want you to leave Kenya and go back home. I mean, I've experienced this. I've experienced it here at this church. Times when 
I was told to leave here and here, not here. You got to leave. You got to get out. Get out of here. Go away. Nobody wants you anymore. Okay? Um, rejection is something I really have a struggle dealing with. Uh, the fear of people rejecting me. That's a very legitimate fear with me. Goes back to childhood. I should probably sit on the couch and let, and let you analyze me, but, but that's, that's just how it works, and I think devils know that about me. But if I'm armed, not, it's not going to work. When a strong man armed, keep this palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him, look at your Bible. When a stronger than he. Now, you have no power against them because of your weakness. Without the armor, you won't make it. Without the armor, you'll be like these DeSoto High School kids. You'll kill yourself. At some point, decisions were made that those young people were going to die. And the devils made sure of it. Okay? Killing them. Um, let's... let's Stop here for a minute. Let's look at some people's lives. Okay? Elvis Presley. How did he die? Drug overdose. You know what that is? Elvis Presley was the strong man that was not armed. Okay? And those devils took his life. Okay? That wasn't the first time Elvis Presley had ever taken pills. Wasn't the first time. And did he get them off the street? No, they were all prescribed, weren't they? Michael Jackson. How did he die? Drug overdose. Did he get them off the street? No, his doctor is, and his doctor in prison now? They find him guilty? His doctor who only had one patient. It was Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson had enough money to pay this doctor his salary to keep him in these drugs. And he overdosed. Killed him. Um, Chris Farley. How did he die? Drug overdose. John Belushi. How did he die? Janis Joplin. How did she die? Okay. Drug overdose. Um, Jim Morrison. How did he die? Drug overdose. Huh? Kurt Cocaine. To me, that's his name, Kurt Cocaine. Uh, drug overdose. Okay? Oh, he committed suicide, didn't he? His was deliberate. But these people, unarmed, and over, a, it wasn't a, one day they're perfectly fine and the next day they're abusing drugs. This was a process in these people's lives. They had money and they had the access to all the drugs that m that money could buy and it was almost unrestricted to them. They personally were not going to go out to the, to the neighborhood to buy drugs. They would send somebody out, do their dirty work for them, come back with a big suitcase full of drugs and they would take as much as they want. Unrestricted. These people, at some point, their will was taken over by spirits. And those spirits killed them. Devils, and I've mentioned this at the beginning of our study, devils love to kill humans. Okay, it's their number one sport, is killing humans. The Bible tells us that Satan himself has the power over death. And he takes the life from people at his own will, but allowed by God. And he takes life away from people. So it's no wonder to me that the people who spend their life yielding their will over 
to spirits, at some point those spirits come calling and take their life. A stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him. He taketh from him all his what? Armor. Wherein he trusted. Look at your Bible. You trust the Bible? There's your sword. You trust the shield of faith? That's your, that's your Bible. The helmet of salvation? Your Bible. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel? That's your Bible. Loins girt with truth? Thy word is truth. It all goes back to your Bible. You trusted the Bible at one point. At one point, people trusted the Bible. Then they stopped trusting it. Why? Because this, these devils came. I almost called them strong men. These devils came and took from them their armor wherein they trusted. And took it away from them. And now what do they have to defend themselves? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That applies to a person. It applies to a home. Do you think whole families can be full of devils? Oh my goodness. In 21st century America, I would just guess that maybe a majority of American households, there are so many devils living in that residence. Those people, those kids never stand a chance. Never stand a chance. Churches. Churches are houses, places of worship, inhabitants. These devils come in stronger than those people. Take away from them the armor wherein they trusted. Take it away from them. So what does a church have when their Bible has been taken away? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They have no means of defending themselves whatsoever. They cannot stop what these devils intend to do there. They cannot stop it. They have no power against it. So the, you think I'm crazy? The first thing that they start doing, let's, let's go through the list of what separates, let's say, this church from a 5,000 member mega church in the same city. The Bible, first thing. This Bible versus all of their 20 different translations, which they almost never bring to church anymore. Because it's up on the screen and they don't have to read a Bible anymore and it's 10 different translations in every sermon so they can't keep up with it anyway so they don't bring a Bible anymore. Okay? Uh, what other things separate, let's say, this church and how we do things from a 5,000 member mega church? Huh? Their music. Okay, their music is going to be beat oriented. It's going to be uh, bland and generic. And it's going to be songs almost nobody knows. And the generic part is they're going to be singing in worship to an unidentified you. Okay, not E-W-E, Y-O-U. Okay, they're going to be singing to an unidentified God. What else? Okay, the type of messages that are preached. Alicia. Oh, yeah. The. Okay, I get what you're saying. There's no closeness there, except there may be cliques of people. But I was thinking along the lines of. Here these people are. A vast majority of them. Live lifestyles that are not. Biblical. Okay? And they go to that church because it's never condemned, it's never talked about, it's never preached on. That, that stuff never comes up. So you have, you have drunkards there. They drink, they have the little parties, they'll have little neighborhood parties Friday and Saturday night, play poker, and then they come to church on Sunday. Or you have live-in boyfriends, live-in girlfriends there with their different children there, and they shuffle them off in the children's church so, so they get free babysitting for an hour and a half. And then you have lesbian couples and the gay couples coming. 
Nothing said, and these people come there. That house is so full of devils. The strong man was bound a long time ago. And it was the, the will of that church. You see, this is why you don't run the old people out. Because those old people know the old paths. And they would say, this is the way wherein we ought to walk. But because they're thrust out, okay, that happened. Listen, there was a church in this town, pretty good sized church, that their pastor was doing exactly that, what I'm talking about, was going to transition that church. And the older folk got really upset about it. And they had heard that there was a pastor in the town of that church that had made a video called the Emerging Church. And it was on exactly what was going on at that church. And they come over here to our church to get those videos. It was me. And one of the guys was my old assistant principal, Mr. T. And his wife come pulling in the parking lot. They wanted copies of those videos because they didn't like what was going on over at their church. They were the old people being thrust out. And they said, this is not the way we do it. And they said, well, forget about your tradition. We're going to have church. Okay. And I'm just saying, the will, the free will of those people was taken away from them. And their strong man was bound. And the church was spoiled because of it. It got so bad that most of those people left and started a different church and their sign said traditional. Not traditional worship 10, contemporary at 11. They didn't say that. It said traditional. Okay. And so I'm, whether, it's, whether it's a person or a, or a family or a church, denomination, a ministry, a movement of any kind or a nation, the strong man represents the will of those people or that person. And they would say, this is how we want it. This is how, this is how it's going to be here. But when the strong man, here's, here's what I'm getting at. Here's the real message. We haven't got to it yet. I'm building up to it. How is that strong man bound? What happens to bind that strong man okay what happens to him there's a list of things and we don't have time to deal with it tonight but i'm telling you that's the message that's where we're going with this because do we want it to happen here do you want it to happen to you would you like for it to happen in your marriage your home Absolutely not. Those devils have no place there. Kick them out. Okay? But if you invited them in, they're not going to be so easy to get them out. You invited them. And how did you invite them? What was it that you wanted to do or wanted to be a part of or wanted to taste or whatever. What was it that you wanted that was exactly where they sit? And when you wanted that, they came with it. You believe that? Okay. Do you believe that there's a devil with every can of beer? Or at least 20 of them. Okay. There's a bunch of them in that can. And they will come with that can. Wherever that can goes, that's where they're going. Because they were just invited in. You see what I'm saying? So let's say that you're trying to protect your home from, from evil bandits. But you invite somebody over that just happens to be a bandit. And you suspected it, but you thought, ah, they're not going to do any harm. And so you had a little party with them. And when they left at 1130, half your stuff's gone. Okay. If you got them out. 
So Ephesians 6, and we'll read this, we'll go through this very quickly. And then next Sunday night, we're going to deal with how they come in. That this, this is needed. This, we got to know these things. Okay, we have got to teach these things. We've got to reinforce these things. These things, I've taught these over the years, I'm going to teach them again. I need to relearn them again. Especially in the month of October. Everybody wants to, listen, my, and it does, you ought to ask my wife. She just hates it when September rolls around. She goes into stores and there's all these things going, Rah! And she says, you know, when I was a kid, I used to love that stuff. She said, I hate it. I'm with you, dear. Although that does look pretty cool, I have to admit. I mean, that's me, that's my nature, okay? Ephesians 6, 11. I'll tell you, I helped, a, I helped a family get a real coffin for their Halloween deal that they had at their house. A real coffin. I helped them get it. See, I know a guy. Okay? <laughs> it was. It was a real coffin. Because they called and asked, can you get us a real coffin? Hang on. I made a phone call. Yep, I got one for you. The only thing is, he doesn't want it back. Oh, that's no problem. We'll keep it. It's Okay. They, they decorated their house on Halloween night with that coffin and the guy laid in it. See, that's, listen, the, the manic from the Gadarenes, where did he live? In the tombs. That's death, people. That's not life. That's not who we're called to be. Amen? Ephesians 6, 11. You think, here's, here's how they're, this is how, if you don't fight, they're going to, they're going to come in. If you don't fight. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We are the strong man. And we have, right now we have choices. And we say this is how we want our life to be. We want to walk the straight and narrow. We want to be in heaven when we die. Okay? But you're not the only person who said that who got bound in the end. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. See, if you got that armor, that's the target of the devil's. Is to come in to get your armor away from you, where you, wherein you trusted. You see it now, don't you? I see it, and it's been there all the, all along. And I had it so flipped up and upside down, I didn't recognize it. But this is it right here. Take unto you the whole armor of God, which may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. That's your Bible. Breastplate of righteousness. That's your Bible. Your feet shod the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's your Bible. Above all, taking the shield of faith, that's your Bible. Wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. They're going to attack. They're going to shoot the fiery darts at you. The fiery darts are meant to destroy your armor. And to weaken you so that they can come in take over. Uh, quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And I will say this. You will not make it if you're not saved. You won't make, period. You will not make it. There are no successfully unsaved anti-devil warriors. They all will get defeated because they do not have the helmet of salvation. Many. In fact, there's a verse that, just, that goes along with this. Many strong men. That's the book of Proverbs. Many strong men are destroyed by her. The strong man is our will and the strength of our choices that we make. And we say that we want things right. It's going to be known by the warfare we do. Okay? Because if you lay down your armor, toss down your weapon, and give up, remember you have no helmet of salvation. You're going to lose. Okay. I was asked the question years ago by one of our students. Pertaining to these three young people. 
If Christians kill themselves, do they still go to heaven? And I said, your question's wrong. I said, you asked the wrong, you did not use the words right in that sentence. You assumed that a Christian would blow their brains out or kill themselves or take their own life against God. You assume that. Okay? And I'm not going to get into much on the suicide deal, but I'm telling you, had these young people been raised differently, they would have stood a far greater chance of being alive today. Okay? I'm fiercely against suicide. Totally against suicide. And no, Samson did not commit suicide. He was in war. He was, it was an act of war. Okay? He gave his life to save others. That's not suicide. Okay? All right. Let's stand to our feet. I'm not going to keep... Boy, I, I could teach on this till 11.30 tonight. Ought to, one of these days. You just might as well just get it in your mind. One of these days, I'm going to pick a Sunday night and we're going to go, all right? All right. Father in heaven, I love you and thank you, God, for this Bible. This Bible's right in everything. And God, I, I'm just, I'm in, in, in awe. And God, when I had these verses flipped upside down, it didn't make sense. I didn't, I, I didn't, underst- I didn't have the understanding. But now I see it. Now I understand it. Now I get it. God, I've seen a lot of strong men destroyed. A lot of them. And God, I just don't want that to be me. I don't want it to be anybody in my family. I really don't want that. I don't want it to be anybody in this church or any of my children, any of these children. I love them. So, Father, I pray, God, or any of these people online, Lord, they are our friends, they are our brethren and sisters. The good people in Kenya, God, they deal with, they deal with witchcraft there, the likes of which we have never seen here. And, God, I pray, Lord, that you would protect them. And Lord, just give them a shield, a strong shield of faith. Hide them under your wings, God. Give them protection, Father, from the wiles of the devil. And all these devils, Lord, that want to inhabit they want to take over their nation. God, they want to, they want to take over all their churches. They, they do not want the gospel preached. And I pray, dear God, Lord, that you would just give them strength and give them that armor, Lord, to pre- be able to protect themselves against these wiles of the devil. God, with the real warfare we're fighting today. And God, I don't want to lose. I've lost enough already. Lord, just bless your word and help us, dear God, to be faithful to it. It's what we're asking you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed tonight.